Learn step-by-step the process to create a new purebred laying hen breed unique to the poultry world. The million dollar question, how do you create a new breed? Chicken breeding is an ancient art, but in the modern era, it has become a sophisticated science. Many breeders, both new and experienced, dream of a goal that seems reserved only for the big players, to create their own chicken breed with unique and stable characteristics. It's an ambition that shows passion, vision, and a desire to leave a mark on the poultry world. But the question is, how do you achieve this? Is it possible for a backyard breeder to develop a line that can compete with the commercial breeds we know today? The answer is a resounding yes, and the key to the entire process lies in understanding genetics. This video will not only answer that question, but will also guide you through the process step by step, using a subscriber's question as a starting point to unlock the secret of professional poultry farming. And if you like this video, please support us with a like. If you're not yet part of this ornamental poultry community, I invite you to subscribe and activate the notification bell so you don't miss our future videos. A comment from one of our followers is the perfect starting point, as it leads us directly to the heart of poultry genetics. The method they describe, taking an F1 rooster which is the first generation from a cross between two purebreds, and crossing it back to a purebred hen, is an advanced and fundamental technique known as backcrossing. What the follower is doing is not a random cross, it's a deliberate process designed to fix specific traits and start a new hybrid line with a clear objective. The key, as our follower rightly suspects, isn't just the initial cross, but the rigorous selection of the best individuals in each generation. That's where the magic of genetics begins to happen. Creating purebreds from crosses is not a new idea. In fact, most of the chicken breeds we know and love today were the result of a similar process. Breeders of the past dedicated decades to perfecting a line, selecting the best specimens generation after generation, until the desired traits, such as egg production, climate resistance, or a unique plumage, appeared consistently throughout the offspring. What seems like a mystical process is actually a scientific and disciplined methodology that has shaped poultry farming throughout history. Our goal in this video is to demystify this process. We want to show that you don't need a sophisticated lab or thousands of dollars to get started. With knowledge, patience, and good observation of your birds, you can apply the same principles as professional breeders to create your own genetic legacy. We will guide you through the journey so that by the end of this video you will not only have the theory but also a plan of action to become the architect of your own chicken breed. To understand how to create a new breed, we must first understand two key concepts in poultry genetics, the purebred and the hybrid. A purebred is an animal that, when bred with another of its same breed, produces offspring with predictable and uniform characteristics, generation after generation. A hybrid, on the other hand, is the result of crossing two different purebreds, a cross that produces what breeders call hybrid vigor. This vigor is an explosion of performance, but its genetics are unstable. That's why the first step to creating a new breed is the initial cross of two existing purebreds with the traits we want to improve to get the first generation that will be your base, the F1 hybrid, which is what the follower described in their comment, and is the foundation for creating a new breed. Now comes the crucial step. Backcrossing is the process where we take an F1 hybrid and cross it back with one of its purebred parents, which we will call P1. Why do we do this? Because the goal is to filter the genetics of the hybrid, we want the offspring, known as the BC1 generation, to retain the unique trait we're seeking from the other pure parent, P2, but to inherit the uniformity and 75% of the genetics from the pure parent we backcrossed with, P1. It's like carving a genetic sculpture, removing what doesn't serve the purpose, and keeping what brings us closer to perfection. To better illustrate this, imagine you cross a hen from breed B, which lays blue eggs and has a small body, with a rooster from breed A, which has beautiful plumage and is robust. The F1 hybrid might have a bit of both. Your goal is a hen with the beautiful plumage and robust body of breed A, but one that lays blue eggs like breed B. Backcrossing allows you to take the best individuals from the F1 generation and cross them back with breed A. This way, each new generation will look more like breed A, but will continue to carry the dominant gene for blue egg color. This is not a single step process. Controlled inbreeding, that is, constant backcrossing, is a long-term project that requires patience. To achieve the genetic uniformity and stability that define a new breed, you will need to repeat this process of selection and crossing for at least five generations. Persistence is the only way to guarantee that, in the end, your new breed will have the characteristics you desire. 
with the same predictability as a traditional purebred. The roadmap, the step-by-step -step process. The first step of this epic journey is the foundational cross. You need to select the two most suitable purebred parents you can find. Look for birds that not only have the traits you want to inherit, but also show excellent vigor and health. The goal of this initial cross, P1 by P2, is to produce the first generation of hybrids, the F1. From all the chicks that hatch, you must select the best and healthiest ones, those that show the potential to carry and transmit the traits you are looking for. These will be the pillars of your future breed. Once you have your F1 generation, we move on to initial backcrossing and selection. Cross your best F1 specimens back with one of the original purebred parents. This step is critical, as it is here that you will begin to fix the genetics you are interested in. But the work doesn't end with the cross. You must carefully observe the resulting offspring, BC1. Which ones have the trait you are looking for? Which ones have the best temperament? Who are the healthiest and most vigorous? Selection is the most demanding and exciting part of the process. The key to success lies in rigorous selection and generational advancement. From now on, the roadmap repeats itself. From the BC1 generation, you again select the best individuals and cross them back with the original parent. This process is repeated for three, four, or even five generations. With each step, you will be eliminating unwanted variability and consolidating your new lineage. It is a meticulous job of record-keeping, observation, and patience. Each generation is a new genetic canvas on which you, as an artist, are painting the future of your breed. Finally, we arrive at the line stabilization. Around the fifth generation, BC5, you will have reached a crucial point. The new line you have created will reproduce consistently, and the traits you selected will appear in the offspring in a predictable manner. At this point, you can consider that you have created a new purebred chicken breed. It is the result of years of dedication and a testament to your knowledge and patience. Your breed now has a unique genetic identity, ready to be perfected or used as a basis for other projects. Once you understand the process of backcrossing and line stabilization, we arrive at the most creative and crucial part, selecting the breeds that will form the foundation of your future line. This step is your genetic blueprint. You can't just cross two random birds. Each breed you choose must contribute a specific trait you want in your new creation. The choice of your foundation parents is the most important decision you'll make, as it will determine the long-term success or failure of your project. If your dream is to create a laying hen breed that is the envy of the poultry world, you have an arsenal of proven breeds at your disposal. In America, you could base your line on the prolific Rhode Island Red, known for its high production of brown eggs, the robust Wyandotte with its many color varieties, or the popular Leghorn and its tireless egg-laying ability. From France, you can turn to breeds of great historical and genetic value, such as the Poule Russe, the French equivalent of the Leghorn, used in most commercial egg operations, the elegant Poule Gatinaise, or the productive Marant, famous for its spectacular chocolate-colored eggs. The key is to choose one with a characteristic you want to fix in your breed. If, on the other hand, your goal is to develop a superior meat breed, the strategy changes. Here, growth rate, feed conversion, and breast meat yield are what matter. You could use a giant breed like the Jersey Giant for mass and size, or you can opt for the Cornish which provides muscle and a broad breast. The White Plymouth Rock is another incredibly versatile option, known for its excellent meat yield and its ability to pass on those traits uniformly. For a more professional approach, nothing stops you from using a meat hybrid like the Ross or the Cobb and crossing it with a purebred like the Sasso to introduce genes for hardiness and flavor, with the goal of fixing those traits into a new line. And what if your vision is more artistic? What if you dream of a hen that lays blue eggs and has exotic, unique plumage? Genetics make it possible. You can start with breeds like the Cream Leg Bar, which is known for its blue eggs and auto-sexing plumage, or the Arakana, which was used to create the Cream Leg Bar in England. Another excellent option is the Americana, which is the American version of the Arakana. For plumage, you can cross it with a breed like the Bard Plymouth Rock. The Bard pattern is a dominant gene or the Brahma to add dense plumage and feathered feet, giving it an imposing appearance. You can even use an English breed like the Orpington, with its voluminous body, for the calm temperament you're looking for. With the right knowledge, every trait is a piece of a genetic puzzle you can put together. For a breeder seeking perfection, genetics is not a lottery. It's a set of rules that, when understood, allows you to predict and control the outcome of your crosses. The first concept you must master is the difference between dominant and recessive genes. A dominant gene is like a genetic boss. If it's present, its trait will appear in the bird. 
Recessive genes are more discrete. They need to be present in both parents for their trait to appear in the offspring. Understanding this dynamic is the first step to becoming a true genetic architect. The good news is that many of the most visible traits you are interested in are dominant, which makes the selection process much easier. Traits like a single comb, black feather color, or wattles are dominant genes that express themselves strongly. For example, if you cross a purebred hen with a single comb, with one that has a rose comb, all of the F1 offspring will have a single comb. These types of traits allow you to see quick results and help you determine if your initial cross is working. However, there are other very desirable traits that are recessive, and these require more patience. The genes for autosexing plumage, the gene that suppresses yellow leg pigment, and the gene that gives blue egg color are all examples of recessive genes. These traits can remain hidden for generations, reappearing only when two parents who carry that gene are crossed. This is why the back crossing process is so vital. It allows you to continue selecting and crossing until, finally, you express the traits you were looking for. Mastering this science will allow you not only to create new phenotypes, the appearance of the birds, but also to know what to expect at each stage of the process. By understanding heredity, you can avoid unpleasant surprises and make intelligent breeding decisions. With each cross, you are one step closer to creating a breed with the exact look and performance characteristics you have imagined. Now let's talk about the most dangerous mistake you can make in breeding. One that can ruin years of work in a single season. Uncontrolled inbreeding. Although backcrossing is a form of controlled inbreeding, if it is done without knowledge, it can lead to genetic catastrophe. When you cross very close relatives like brother and sister or father and daughter without a clear plan, you accumulate defective genes that can have devastating consequences. The dangers of inbreeding are real and go beyond visual traits. A high level of inbreeding can lead to a drastic reduction in fertility, with a lower hatch rate and weaker chicks. The bird's immune systems become weakened, making them extremely vulnerable to disease. Genetic defects that were previously hidden can also appear, such as leg problems or beak deformities, putting the health and well-being of your entire flock at risk. The solution to this problem is planning. If you have a single rooster from your new line, you can use him to cross with his daughters, but only in the first generation. From the next, it's essential to use multiple roosters from your line to reduce inbreeding levels. For larger projects, you should create multiple pens and rotate the males among them. This allows you to maintain the genetics you've created while ensuring that very close relatives don't mix, preserving the genetic diversity that is the basis of a healthy flock. In the world of professional poultry farming, inbreeding is a tool, not an end. It is used strategically and in a limited way. For the backyard breeder, the principle is simple. Maintain the greatest possible genetic diversity within your line. By doing so, you not only guarantee the health of your birds, but also ensure that the hard work you have invested in their creation remains viable and fruitful for the long term. Although this video focuses on the art and science of genetics, there is a crucial point we cannot overlook. Genetics is only half of the equation. A hen can only reach its full potential if it is given the proper fuel and environment to do so. There's no use in having perfect genetics if the birds don't receive optimal nutrition, or if they live in an environment that stresses them and makes them sick. Nutrition is key. If your goal is a high-laying hen, her diet must be rich in protein and calcium to support constant egg production. If you're looking for a meat breed, the feed must be rich in protein and carbohydrates to promote rapid muscle development. Every stage of your bird's life, from chick to adult, has specific nutritional requirements, and not addressing them is like expecting a race car to win on low-grade fuel. The environment is also fundamental. A well-ventilated, clean, and dry coop is your best defense against disease. Chronic stress, caused by overcrowding, lack of water, or excessive heat, can suppress the bird's immune systems, making them vulnerable to any illness. The success of your genetic project depends on you giving your birds the ideal conditions to thrive and express the potential you have created. A true breeder is not only a geneticist but also a nutritionist and an architect. At the same time that you are working on selecting traits, you must ensure that every bird in your line receives the best possible care. In the end, genes give you the potential, but management and nutrition are what turn it into reality. In a project that can last five years or more, memory is not enough. The final and most crucial step for any serious breeder is to keep meticulous records of every bird and every cross. Think of this as the journal of your genetic laboratory. Without it, it's impossible to know what genes each bird is transmitting, and you could end up making inbreeding mistakes or losing the traits you worked so hard to fix. Your journal should be your most valuable tool. 
What information should you record? Every bird should have a unique identifier, a leg band or tag. Record its hatch date, the cross it came from, its parents, and any observations you make about its temperament, vigor, and characteristics. How many eggs does it lay? What color are they? Has it had any health problems? Every piece of data is a piece of the puzzle. This record is what will allow you to make informed decisions about which birds to select for the next generation. It will help you identify which genetic lines are working and which are not. Over time, this record will become the history of your breed, an invaluable document you can use to continue improving and perfecting your lineage in the future. Dedication to record keeping is what separates a simple hobbyist from a professional breeder. It is a job that requires patience, but it is the only way to guarantee that your project does not stray from its path. If you want to create a legacy in poultry farming, the pen and paper are just as important as the rooster and hen. You've accomplished the unthinkable. You've created a new chicken breed that reproduces uniformly and predictably. Now that you hold this genetic work of art in your hands, the question is, how do you make it official? How do you get it recognized worldwide, like the Plymouth Rock or the Favorals? The final step, and perhaps the most rewarding, is formalization and registration, a process that allows you to secure your place in the history of poultry farming. The first step is to approach a breed association. In the United States, you have the American Poultry Association (APA). Every country has its own association, so it's a matter of seeing which one is closest to you. These organizations are the guardians of breed standards. For your creation to be considered, you must present a group of specimens that meet a consistent and detailed breed standard that you yourself have defined. This includes body type, plumage color, comb shape, and egg color. Uniformity is proof that your genetic work has paid off. Once your breed meets the preliminary standards, the formal recognition process can take years. You will have to present your birds at poultry shows and get approval from a committee of judges who will evaluate whether your breed reproduces consistently. This is the real final exam. At the same time, it is crucial that you begin to publicize your breed. Share photos and videos on forums, social media, and YouTube channels. Organize local exhibitions and talk to other breeders to generate interest and a community of support. In the end, this process is not just a formality, it's a way to share your passion and hard work with the world. You are actively contributing to poultry genetic diversity and ensuring that your legacy endures. When you achieve official recognition, your breed will not only be a personal success but will become a new option for breeders worldwide. It is the culmination of an epic journey that has made you a true innovator. You've accomplished the first and most difficult step, creating a genetic line that is the result of your own vision. Now you have a pure, stable, and unique breed. This knowledge is the true secret of professional poultry farming, a legacy that positions you as a true pioneer. But the journey doesn't end here. In fact, the real magic begins now. If your goal is commercial production, the next step is what really separates an amateur breeder from an elite one. High-performance hybridism is the culmination of everything you've just learned. Once you have your own pure breed, the strategic cross of two of your lines allows you to create an F1 hen that is not only unique but also surpasses its parents in vigor and productivity. It's this explosion of performance that turns a hen into a true laying machine or a champion meat grower. It is the end of the search for the perfect genetics. If you want to learn how to take your project to the next level and produce your own elite hybrids, you can't miss the second part of this epic guide. In our next video, we will reveal step-by-step -step how to create a new F1 laying hen line that is unique in the poultry world. Be sure to subscribe and activate the notification bell so that YouTube alerts you as soon as we publish a new video. Share this video with all the breeders you know so that our community continues to grow. See you in the next video. For your success, my fellow breeder, until next time.